Welcome back to the Summer Land. Myself and Agro bringing you all the action from the desk today. We've already had a little look at one of the international sets that we had before you here. And that, of course, was get on my level up against Nocturne's Gaming, where the Latin America team succeeded. But now we get to move on to see Oceana take on Brazil. And Black Dragons looked like the best international team yesterday. They still got 2-0 to the hands of Team Rival, but it was close. Game one particularly was incredibly close between those two teams, really the only international team that did have a close matchup in round one. So if memory serves, Black Dragons should just continue and, and be looking pretty good here. Yeah, this is kind of a story of these two regions in terms of, well, the Brazil team has been around a long time, Ryan, and yep. been working long and hard to get themselves going. But this Atletico team, they're young. They're kind of relatively new to the LAN experience too. So a lot to learn and then eventually try and prove. Yes, that is the big deal, is that Atletico has a lot of new faces to the international scene, and they struggled yesterday. Shank in particular really struggled, and I think that's where I'm going to focus watching this game is is the dual lane of atletico versus black dragons p bay and marcells have been around forever in the international scene zays and shank newer to it so it, shank has got to try and shake off that rough performance completely yesterday. agree but the question is is that was that because of the picks and bands that he was forced to play those guys or was it just his what he can do Yes. That's the big difference, isn't it? It, it was, yes. It was both yep. in, my, in my mind. And, and that's where Atletico have got to go back to the drawing board a little bit and say, maybe we should try and work on this. You know, maybe this pick will work out in the dual lane. It's, remember, it's not just Shank's pick that leaves him vulnerable. It's the ADC pick as well for Zays. You have to have a pick that can do well against your opposition. Well, we got a chance to speak to Atletico this morning to see how they are feeling today. Let's have a listen in. I'm with Shank and Add-ons from Atletico. How are you guys feeling after day one's performance? What have you learned? Um, we're trying not to think too much about yesterday. It was pretty it was pretty hard to versus United. We're just trying to leave that in the past to be confident for today. Um, I think versus the other international teams, we're feeling a bit more, you know, pretty, like, a bit easier about it. Black yeah. Dragons are hard, but we're pretty excited to see how we go up against them. Yeah, it was fun watching you guys uh, yesterday do your thing. Black Dragons, you guys seem confident. Without giving too much away, anything specific that you plan on giving uh, to the Black Dragons? Um, I guess we're just trying to do what we always do and just play up. Uh, if we're not playing aggressive, I don't think we really enjoy playing the game. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah so if we're just playing aggressive, we'll have a lot of fun. And More hopefully. comfort picks as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So Black Dragons yesterday played against Rival. Did you watch that game? And if so, what did you notice that you can exploit for today? Do I ask this one? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we watched it, and we um yeah we took little notes and saw what we could exploit and what we should pick against them, what we should ban against them. And, and then just, real quick, last question. Coach Cutie Pie seems to be a big part of what you guys do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, Shank, you're laughing. <laughs> Talk to me about the coach. Cutie, Cutie's awesome. Uh, Cutie's like our mum. You know, he's got the Hannah Montana. You know, little book. He's got his little sparkly little clipboard and stuff. But he's great. You know, he's always keeping us motivated, always keeping spirits high. You know, even after I'm 1 and 15, I'm still having fun in there, you know. Yeah. He's still making us laugh, and it's, yeah, he's fun. Awesome. Thanks a lot for your time, and good luck. Thank you. That was a little talk with Shank there, as you can see. He he understood his situation yesterday, at least, and uh, they've prepared today quite clearly. That's, uh, and look, the fact that Rival played the longest game of the day yesterday against Black Dragons, yeah. meaning that this team, Atletico, got a good look at what Black Dragons have to offer. How they're going to try and deal with deficit, too. Exactly. So, and especially if they're going to want to play aggressive. You heard them there. If they're not playing aggressive, they aren't playing their style. Yeah. So, I wonder what that's going to mean in picks and bans. The the aggressive supports, I'm looking at Kumbakarna I want to see in that early game. Maybe we do go to a Warrior support mm. of a Guan Yu and Erlong Shen, something like that. If you really want to turn up the heat and play aggressive, I think that's the way you can do it. Well, they said they like aggression, so we'll find out when we get to those picks and bans. But their opposition are the Black Dragons. And these guys, well, most of them have been around the block for a while now. None you'll see since day one, I feel, yep. since World Championships won. P-Bay, Marcel's a long time too. Gons is the, well, the newest member of this team to an extent. And yep. he's even fitting in nicely here. Gons and P-Bay seem to be the two that seem to struggle the most. Yeah, those two are still trying to, to match the level, I think, of the other three at times. Though, I do think that P-Bay has had some really good plays during his time, Gons had some really good plays. They it's have. just the consistency that's a problem. Well, let's have a little chat with them and see how they felt coming into today. Hey, what's up, guys? Standing here with Kliz and Nan. Uh, before we get into the game stuff, I want to ask you about Black Dragons, the org. Seems to be a lot of support there. Talk to me about how Black Dragons have helped you as a team. 
and basically we were we fought at Ari after we left Iron to Z for a while and Black Dragons came and like offered us you know like um, the opportunity to play on their org they really supportive like uh, usually one team owner comes with us so they're like really there for us as uh, more of a personal involvement than like other orgs in the past so that's been pretty sweet Good stuff, good stuff. Yesterday, specifically, you guys were up against Rival. Today, you're going up against Atletico. Did you learn anything from day one that you're going to take into day two? I think pretty much we played a good game. Uh, we just hope we don't commit them the same mistakes again uh, and try to, to win this time. Usually, we're asking about the difference between NA and EU meta and what you guys do. Now, it's Oceana. What can you tell about their gameplay that you guys are going to be able to exploit? Um, I think they look like pretty well similar to NA and EU in general. I think international regions tend to like copy a lot, especially like we have our own kind of stuff with Nocturnes. I think that's like some kind of difference. But I feel like other international regions in general just like copy a lot. So I don't think there's like too much uh, difference between one and the other. So what are we going to see today out of you guys? 2-0, 2-1? 2-0. 2-0. Thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you. Kliz and Nan from Black Dragons. There's Black Dragons. Expecting a 2-0 here today. Like they said, Ryan, I mean, the performance against Rival yesterday, Rival and the other international North American EU teams, like they kind of didn't go full gun co yesterday. They, you know, experimented a little bit, didn't show too many strategies. Right. But Black Dragons were the one team out of the fourth in the international region that really went, don't try and have too much fun with us because we will make you be punished. And there was chances Rival could have lost that game one. Yeah, there really were. And I think the Black Dragons is a team that doesn't look at that almost win in game one and be like, man, we did really well yesterday. No. We almost be Rival. They're like, F, we didn't win. We should have. You know, th that's a frustration factor for them. Instead of a, a, a not an, not to say that they're discouraged, but they expect to win, even against rival and e United and all of these teams. And, and I really like that about their mentality. I do. I have a feeling this set could be the most kill-hungry game that we're gonna see this week. Yeah. These two teams both want to represent their regions to the best of their ability. Oceana and really still looking for wins and Black Dragons, you know, they're trying to make a name for Brazil every single time they come here. Big set between the two. Tough. Artemis, the first two bats. I mean, Atletico's game against the United yesterday was certainly a bloodbath, but it yep. was a little bit one-sided in the United's favor. But I think that was our bloodiest game of the entire day, so would stand to reason that there's certainly potential for that here against a team like Black Dragons, who have played against teams like United for quite a long time. So it's not just, uh, you know, we say a lot, other teams from other regions can watch what Energy and Dignitas and yeah. Space Station do. They have trouble emulating it a lot of the time. Black Dragons really can emulate a lot of what these SPL teams are able to pull off. With those bands coming through, though, it's a theme that that's left up, as was Chernobyl. And obviously, you can't give them both, so one team's going to get each. Atletico are favoring the Athena over the Chernobyl. And again, yesterday, Sh Shank was the one who really struggled. So I he think did, that prioritizing him early on is a, is a good idea here. And if yeah. this is a comfort pick for him, you heard Adon say it during the interview. Hello, you want to go for comfort picks? Let's, let's get him early. I got excited. I'm sorry. It's the first time we've seen Raw, I it believe, is. this week. And I expect to see a little bit more of him. Sustain was a big talk of the town through the last split of summer. But then coming to land, first time we've seen it. It is the first time and certainly could be a good pick here for add-ons. But I wonder if Black Dragons is right now go Chonga. The Cullen is a bit scary for her, but it does bring anti-heal automatically just by the three. It heals your team, anti-heals the other squad. Cerberus also available here, and that's exactly where Kliz most likely will end up going. Yeah, Cerberus is calling the more likely matchup we'll see now between these two. Into the counterband phase we go, and Black Dragon's very quickly there. Just taking away that Medusa, the Athena-Medusa combo. Days gone by ever since Medusa was first released to the world, or to the Battleground of the Gods. I should say, that combo was always threatened with it of the Tom Petrify. Man, I, I will never forget playing against that every game back on, uh, those are the very early days of console when Medusa first came out, and that was every every team was like, man, if we just get Athena Medusa, we're going to win. Every, that's the way uh, literally every team felt. But as time went on, it didn't work out as well as they hoped, but Blood Dragon still respected it here. The Morrigan ban from Atletico. Wow. They're surprised by that, because Atletico is the only team to run the Morrigan so far. They clearly value it and feel like they it's do. pretty good, and they 
ran it in conjunction with Ratatoskr yesterday. So they're seeing the Ratatoskr across the way for Black Dragons and saying, if we were in their shoes, we'd probably be taking Morrigan in this spot. But Nan is much more of a Giannis style of player, Agni sometimes, things like that, that'll get him some extra control and mobility. I don't know that he would have gone Morgan here. I don't mind that Chongar ban there. Smart. Just because Cerberus can be flexed back to the support role, obviously, you expect him yep. in the solo lane. But you don't want to give Black Dragons a window if you can. The Discordia, another god we've not seen too much of so far. No, but it I like it. I like it a lot. It's good against Athena because you can easily move out of the way of the taunt with your, with your erratic behavior. Your unruly magic is excellent. It's spreading divine ruin throughout a team fight. You, you're going to see Athletico be grouped up a lot of the time. So Strife is really, really good against healer compositions that want to group and use that healing effectively. You can also use your CC immune ultimate as an immune for the dash taunt, and then you just feed Athena the apple as soon as she dashes into you. I think there's a great pick for Nan. Although Susano back against the Discordia, I'm not upset about this whatsoever. I kind of do like the Susano for being able to pull her potentially out of the invisibility Discordia likes to use. Got to be careful of the apple, though, because yes. that apple will cripple and cause some problems. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't want to play any mid laner against Susano. Susano is just really, really good at killing mid laners. Discordia is one that I'm totally fine with. Uh, you can easily use your three to get up and over Typhoon whenever it's coming at you and he charges it from a distance. You can use it to immune Wind Siphon, which is main displacement ability. I, I think Discordia is really, really good against Athletic composition. Athletico as well, very dive heavy here. The back line themselves of Raw and the Ul will be having to self-peel most of the time. Kakola and Athena and Susano all really want to get in there and try and put the pressure onto them. So Black Dragons have to be aware of that. The Cerberus is going to be an important pick for them then. And they need one more. We'll find out if the Cerberus is solo lane here because I think it could be a Guardian either way. Uh, it, could, it could be a Sobek here. Mm. I think that Sobek would be a pretty solid pick against Athletico's composition because it does give you that anti-heal a little bit against the raw. It gives you plenty of CC, and Black Dragons has a pretty good early to mid-game composition, but their late game is a little bit lacking right now. True. So I think that something like an Amaterasu or a Sobek that can control late game team fights would be exactly what they need. I'm not too far off with Gep though here either, just to deal with the dual lane pressure a little sure. bit. Obviously with Nathina and the Ulder, shields can be useful, especially when Athena gets that mid-game looking to taunt in to have yeah. those shields available could be useful, especially when you look at how their Blood Dragon's initiation is really going to come about right now. Yeah. It's going to be either the Cerberus diving in or the Ratatoska. Yeah. And, you know, having the Geb there could potentially be a good thing. Could be Kepri as well. I think Kepri's pretty like good that. here. There you could go. Give the ultimate over to Ratatoska or Cerberus as they go deep. You can abduct the Athena and set right before she taunts and yep. isolate her from the enemy team. I think Kepri could also fit that same sort of bill as Geb as a protector, but one that is a little bit more defense than that blink cataclysm that you sometimes see out of Geb. Completely agree, thinking about it more so. I think the Capri could be the right call here, but will Black Dragons choose that? Kumba. Kumba Kana. okay. Interesting, so they feel like they needed a little bit more CC. I don't- It's good control. Disagree, I also don't feel like they were heavily lacking CC in this composition, but now this does bring a bit of extra burst damage, and I really should say more than a bit. Epic Uppercut swings. Mm -hmm. It does a lot of damage, and it's really good against Athena. Again, great disruption on her initiation. It's very difficult to taunt Akumba Karna effectively because he can just mez you right away, sure. and Epic Uppercut you right away. This is a solid pick overall. I do think that the Kepri Geb sort of defensive option may have been okay. But this is Black Dragons trying to compete with Atletico's early pressure that they might have. You guys at home get to make your vote now on who you think will win game one. Best of three as always. Are we going with Oceano, Atletico, or the Black Dragons from Brazil? Ryan, I turn to you then after these picks and bands and go, where were you lying? Uh, I was going to go with Atletico. I like their composition, but Kliz threatened me before this game, and so... I don't want him to beat me up. Oh, I'm going to vote for Black Dragons. Okay, well, that's going to be very interesting to see if Black Dragons can do this. Their composition has come together nicely. Atletico, though, they said aggressive. That was going to be the game plan, and that is an aggressive comp they have. It is, but not pre-level 5. This team needs to hit level 5 in order to play aggressive, whereas Black Dragons is a much better level 3 in the mid lane, level 3 in the jungle, things like that. Susano needs to hit level 8, 9 before we can even come close to contesting Ratatoskr. So that's the big one. It's support, like I said earlier. Shank up against P-Bay. How well are they going to do against one another? And then very importantly, in the jungle, how, how those two are going to play against one another. Well, the junglers are going to be the focal point here. It's time to get over to the casters, though. The game is about to get underway. It's Zefto and Anatoly to bring your game. What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Black Dragons and Atletico. It looks like the Aussies ready to start things off hot here, Tully. 
against the Brazilians. Black Dragons trying to make a comeback. Both of these teams are through the lower bracket. We saw the previous set. Nocturnes was able to take out, get on my level, and these two teams trying to get a little bit further in match against the Latin Americans. In this matchup, I think Black Dragons are the top card, but, you know, Hindu has had only positive things to say about Atletico off-air. He's just been talking about how he sees something, he senses something with this team, and I get it. There's four new names, but Osha has been here since minute one. He's played in the scene since, I mean, all the way back to LG, Doyle Wolves, right? Going back there, and I mean, you know, they, they beat up Meme Husies. The difference between Atletico and Dire Wolves is that Dire Wolves probably seemed a little bit too comfortable, almost to a fall. So when they did get into the Ash international scene, they weren't really able to do too much for their namesake. Well, there's Shank getting right aggressive, and PBA is going to make him stop right there. But yeah, I think the bigger point to drive home is that Osha just been here for a minute, been a couple of lands as well. Respectable, recognizable name. Meanwhile, Adams, I've been impressed with what he's been able to do in the mid lane. Hopefully he's able to deal with Nan, who totally, in my opinion, I think Nan might just be the best international player. At the very least, he's up in there. the mid lane. He's definitely up there. I would give it to Nazix, actually, out yeah. of all the team. Basically what he was able to do at Season 3 World up against Team Allegiance when he was substituting for that team and impressive stuff out of him. Ooh. Red buff will not be invaded. Nan's in a bad spot right now, surrounded by three. The sprint's going to be popped. Shank on the run, trying to get the slowdown. There it is. Nice. Here's help on the right-hand side. Texie starts things off hot for the Oceanic region. First blood going to Atletico. You got to hold your turf, and that's what the Aussies did. Did not allow Nan any shenanigans. That red buff invade was so close to being stripped away. Had that gone through, then you would have been able to potentially hit that level three marker to find your escape. Pebay trying to find his escape here. Zayn stole the purple buff, and it looks like he's going to steal the life of Pebay. Competition for the last hit. They give it to the Hunter. Very intentionally yes. gave it to Zayz right there, Tully. Very important considering that he's rushing that transcendence. The faster you can get that online, the more physical power you're going to have. That 10% cooldown reduction, nothing to scoff at. And when you're playing an Uller to try to play hyper-aggressive before right. Marcel's Chernobog becomes online, you're looking for these small edges to control the lane. And I think this is one of those things that, that might have caught Hindu's eye, whether uh, whether you realize it or not, is that teams say a lot of things, we're going to play this way, we're going to do this, but being able to actually execute that on the battlefield is very different. And Atletico came out and said, look, Black Dragons are aggressive, we're going to try to out-aggress them, and that's exactly what they've done. First blood in one lane, uh, the follow-up kill off of the invade, nice stuff coming out from Atletico so far, and we're only two and a half in. Black Dragons need to tweak some of these positioning mistakes because both Nan and Pebe a little bit too far forward for their own good. Normally, you always have to think about that imaginary midline dissecting the two sides between order and chaos. And if you cross that imaginary line, there's going to be a more increasing threat level. Where Nan was, he was at about 60% danger zone. Where Pebe was, he was about 75% in. Right. You, you know, it's funny. I always go back to American football when it comes down to that because you imagine the yard lines. Sure. And for me, that's threat level. 80% yes. danger if you're in the back line somebody's uh, speed buff. But it looks like Atletico going to keep the foot on the gas, deny Kliz his blue buff. Osha picks that one up thanks to Tezki. Very important to deny a Guardian his blue. So looking for more of an advantage, Atletico, despite finding the two kills, able to now look for their own offensive plays after a great defensive hold. And I like what Adams does there. He drops the heal and he turns around. He's ready to fight, ready to turn and burn if need be. Had the ultimate available. And with the aggressor only being level four, I mean, he definitely would have been able to take that fight if Gons decided to Bite off more than he could choose. So. You gotta respect the raw counter damage, the searing pain, celestial beam combination. Now, add-ons was left alone to farm while Techies was kind of just doing the back camps, and that's really min-maxing some of this farm from Atletico as they extend a little bit beyond a 1,000 gold lead four minutes in. So when this raw gets the solo farm, he's gonna be able to hit that level nine marker. Here comes Ratatasker from the sky. This looks dangerous for Atletico. Gonna confirm the kill on the shank and Zayz with the hot 180 axe. Gonna keep the aggressors away. Black Dragon's finally on the board here. I say finally, it's very early on, but we've seen so much action. And it looks like trouble from the jungler. Texie gonna 
impress himself on a P bay, but now he's half HP, but Adams from off screen takes him down. What a shot from the raw mid lane. Marcel's without his ultimate will use that wall for as long as he can, but three Aussies right by his side. The Storm Kata does the trick. Texi setting up the play and finishing it. This is a hot game. You know, we were talking in the green room about how this was going to be the international matchup to really look forward to. And I'll be honest, Tully, I wasn't seeing it. Uh -oh. Atletico certainly surprising me, but Nan with a hot ultimate. Gon's got to catch up to Texi. I think he will. Yeah, speed buff hits him with the Acorns Blast and add-ons. Gets taken out as well in the backside. Looking for the red buff invade. This time, Nan with a great defensive stop, hitting all his abilities. Yeah, that was really important for Black Dragons to sort of quell this rush that Atletico were off to. Sure, Black Dragons had one kill, and, and after that double kill for Black Dragons, keep the pace going. You're already 1,000 gold net down. Try to shorten that, only up to 700 now after Black Dragons pick up that Harpy camp. So BD coming back up. Atletico certainly started this one off like a powder keg, but I think Black Dragons, once they sort of stabilize here, are going to be able to feel a little bit more comfortable. You got to respect the global pressure and just the mobility from this Rata Tasker. Just a 20% movement speed from the Acorn versus only the 18 from Susano as Texi speed buff faded away. Gons was able to pick his up and still rotate to the left side of the map, doing a good job cleaning up. And both these teams feeling very frisky while they have seven combined kills in six minutes of play. P-Bay making the rotation, isolating Shank. Shank immediately goes to the ultimate. That's the right play, and he's going to get on out of there. Add-ons hits up the ultimate. Should, could have saved it, but I do respect the use right there, just pushing people off of his Athena, and Shank gets out of there. Really PBA. nice play. PB with a really good shell. Unfortunately, add-ons could not hit that searing pain just narrowly off the mark from the knockup, and Shank really respecting the damage follow-up by using that defensive ultimate. You don't always have to use it offensively. You can get yourself out of danger as well. I like Nan. He's just been quick on the trigger. He's tossing that ultimate out every chance he gets, and that's one of those... Uh, I, I, I like that gameplay. He might go into that Chronos pendant, if not a Tahuti. And so his mind is just on use the ultimate, use the abilities, and get, is sitting there for with the cooldown for no reason. Just toss it out. Wow. Speaking of tossing it out, Zay's feeling himself tossing out the axe, but nothing connect on that one, but still just the bow shots at this stage of the laning phase before Devo Gloves is fully complete. Marcel, it's going to take him a long time to sustain all that up with only a spike gauntlet. Seven minutes in with just as many kills. We've certainly had an active game so far. Kliz getting aggressed on by the entirety of Atletico. Sand is the hunter and add-ons will take the life of the solo laner. Shank will grab the blue buff, give it over to Osha. And Atletico, just looking good. Second blue buff stripped away now from Kliz. It wasn't the last one, but it was the one before that. And this is really starting to hurt the Guardian from the Cerberus. These taunts have been so good setting up the rest of Atletico. Shank really demonstrating the power of the Athena. Even just walking over to the blue buff, not using the ultimate, shows his presence of mind of where Atletico is desiring to make those plays. And I like Texi here making the plays off of the uh, taunt. Athena taunt into a Susano pull, and all of a sudden, you're so far away from where you started and where most likely you want to be. So Atletico going to use that CC chain to really find players out of position, and if they're not, force them to be out of position. Trying to make something happen in the mid lane. Whenever you see Nathina, you gotta watch out for that dash taunt combination and the fact that she opted to go for the sprint. You don't have to worry about the blink shenanigans quite yet. Zay is gonna head back to base. Already finished off his transcendence, where it's Marcel's opting for the boots. He's gonna go for the Devo gloves a little bit later. And I like both of these plays, Tully. The Uller player rushes the Transcendence, wants to be aggressive and is aggressive, and he's ability-based, mana cooldown, awesome. Whereas Marcel's, his lane's getting ganked all day long. So go for the boots, gives you a better chance of running away. I like both of these options, and I think it's a really nice example of why there's no hard rule. You don't always go your stacking item first. You don't always go boost first. It's all in which... The, the game is dealt to you. On top of that, Marcel's is playing this global pressure Chernabog. If you're rotating to the solo lane, you would rather have completed boots 
then a tier one version of those boots with a completed Devo Gauntlet. That dictates that you want to stay in the laning phase as long as possible and farm it up. And if there's action like we're about to see for a third time around this blue buff, we need to see Marcel's now. Yeah, this has been a heavy focus. And for the third time, Kliz will not get his blue buff. Forced into the ultimate. Here comes help from Gods, but also help from Shank. Kliz about 10% HP so far. Shank and Osha on the run, but Nod's here to say what up. Taunt's good. Nod's ultimate's better. Shank might fall. Just a hair of HP. Gods is there to finish him. P-Bay takes the last hit. Oh, the and root. Kliz locked up. Drop down. The Osha, root. number six. So good was the root. But Marcel's, he used his ultimate. He didn't make the rotation. Now it's a two for one. Favoring Atletico, stripping away the red buff on the left side of the map. Marcel is able to abuse Zay's making this rotation. But if Marcel was there first with his ultimate, like he used it, but he didn't actually go to the right side of the map. Right. Instead, he realized, oh, Zay's is rotating back off. Let me get a solo wave in. Let me strip away the red buff. And to be fair to him, he's getting the experience advantage, getting this one level advantage, being able to stack his Devo gloves. But when your Guardian soul laner is losing his blue buff for the third time this game, there needs to be some sort of cohesion to not necessarily defend it all the time, but allow Atletico to overextend and then punish them with their global presence. Yeah, I mean, here for Black Dragons, the Hunter's nice and even, but there's about a two and a half, three level lead in the solo lane, a two level lead here in the middle lane as well. And that's something that you've got to internalize. I think Black Dragons, and, and I've spoken to them, and Black Dragons are aware that, you know, it's more about the late game. We see sure. North American and European teams do this, where you're down two, 3,000 gold in 10 minutes because the enemy team's being hyper-aggressive. You're still relatively calm and confident. Not too big of a deal, Tolly. But So my question is, when do you work? You got to start making the plays happen now because it's going to get really obnoxious. The fact that Osha, level 12, gets right. a second relic working for the height of Urchin. This half a level to one level advantage that Marcel's does not has does not outweigh what Osha has been able to build. And that's why Atletico starting up this Ooh, gold fury. Just the raw gold fury. No kills or picks to start this one off. 50% gods in the air. Marcel's lurking. The leash from Atletico gonna jump on top of Shank. There's the crowd control from the Hunter and Texi over the wall gonna keep the enemy at bay. Love the positioning from Susano. Gods was able to dash defensively instead of committing it for the damage and the slow. Could have probably held on to his stun after landing. Normally, you want to pop your two, then look for the stun. Making the rotation with the Shanks. So Athena ultimate snipe on the mark. Hits Gons, and he's going to be gone. Osha picks up one, but he is relatively low. Still going to survive. Shank will not. His direct opponent will take him out. P-Bay now has two kills or so. There's the Kadrao control coming out from the Chernabog. Osha, though, tanky as all hell. Level 13 just dancing with this level 9 support. Meanwhile, the rest of the squad a little bit safer. Osha looking to push P-Bay out of the conversation. And that's exactly what he'll do. Kliz. Black Dragons do not want to pull gold. Kliz, no mana, can't really make an impact in that team fight to wrap things up. But good disengage from Atletico. Great defense from Black Dragons using the ultimate when necessary. As soon as Gons went into the sky, the rest of Atletico were no longer interested in that objective. It was kind of a bait and switch where they wanted to bait out those global ultimates and then see if they could find any sort of weakness. But there was nothing to be had. Black Dragons playing safe that time around. Osha ahead in every relevant category, and I think a big part of that is the Stone of Gaia, actually. His direct lane opponent, Kliz, the ultimate, will proc that, as well as Gonz's ultimate, right? When Rat lands down, he's going to be able to get a lot of that nonsense. And Pia, it's just all of these characters are really going to make this Stone of Gaia worthwhile, especially on a character like a Cullen, who's known for dealing with more than one guy at a time. And that's why he's probably going to be continuing to build into the health. Hide of Urchin providing a little bit. Probably going to see a Pestilence or Bulwark of Hope to synergize even further with this item. It's an item that's been very popular in Season 4 before some of the changes as it would actually completely negate a knockback, yeah. pull, grab, find, whatever you want to call it. But this time around, getting some more health in return, so you're still going to get CC'd, but you're going to have a crazy boost of regen. And we've seen that come into play in these team fights. Osha has been really present, really powerful. He's number three on the player damage, but perhaps most importantly, zero deaths here, Anatoly. 
It's very good for him. This Kakulin has been favored considering that Atletico was three times successful in the blue buff invades. Mm. Kliz has been having a rough time defending that. And it's not just the player versus player matchup. It's mostly due to the matchup and how aggressive Texi has been. Well, that's been really rough for Kliz in the early game. But kind of what I was getting at, here as the game gets later, Kliz has been able to cut that lead short. He's level 13 to 14 now. About a level and a half difference. PB gets taunted into a hole. Bonsha nods as he's on the retreat, but Texi takes out Nan in the back. Yeah, Nan was just in the wrong spot. Not even. Texi put himself in the right spot. Gons does make it to the sky, but that again chases the Ratatasca out, ult out. And Atletico will look at the Gold Fury one more time. No global knockup to have to worry about. Kliz going to jump away from the Athena taunt. Gold Fury less than 50%. Health Black Dragons are not in position to steal this. And Atletico 15 minutes in secure the first gold of the game. 3,000 gold in the lead for Atletico. Right now looking really strong. And this is why we've seen this death ball so much. Four players grouping up, three players grouping up, and now five players right here in the middle lane just marching up mid like it's an assault game. And then Osha going to teleport probably to the left side. Yes. yes to make sure he could dissuade the hunter. About a wave and a half worth of farm. Still a two level advantage now for this Kakala, which you get on the left. Atletico gets rewarded again on the right side, securing a Pyromancer. Not even a minute goes by after the goal here that they get that objective. Yeah, this has been all about the objective focus for the black and yellow. Atletico certainly know what they need to do to win this game. They're just abusing the Athena. Every single time Shank is making a play, there's been follow-up from add-ons. Texi is using that diversion to isolate somebody in the back line, mm. which is why he was able to take out Nan, setting up the rest of the play. Very fortunate defender of Olympus timing to hit Gons didn't eliminate his life, but put him in the red to the point where, as a Ratatasker, you have three branches that you jump on, and that gives you time to make a decision in whether or not you can go back in. But when you're in the red like that, it's a hard disengage. At worst, Atletico would have to deal with Kliz, Pibay, and Marcel's in the Goal Fury defense. In a five on three situation, that Goal Fury was essentially free. Liz getting pulled all over the place. Level 14, so he is a little bit more competitive than he was before. There's the ultimate out of the big doggo, but here comes Athena as well. He's going to get hit by the shield wall, and Gods is going to take down Texi, and Shank grabs Kliz right after it. Black Dragons now have the numbers advantage. Nan with a beautiful ultimate. Add-on's going to get hit with a reverberation from it. And on the back line, Osha being picked up. Not dead just yet, but Anons falls to the wayside. Nan making it happen, as will Gods. The global pressure from Black Dragons. Dragons is showing its power as both Shank and Zayz has to disengage a clean disengage rather. Only losing Kliz in the process, keeping their tier two tower alive. This is how you use the global presence. You know, Nan here on the Discordia, not a pick that I've traditionally thought of as Nan's sort of go-to, but two, three, and three, top player damage. Really impressive stuff so far. It helps when you're not the one being focused. A lot has been committed to Kliz under that tier two tower, and that allowed Nan to get those abilities on the backhand side. And a great flank from Pibe. He caught out add-ons in between the Celestial Beam and Searing Pain combination. And that was a split second that allowed Nan to follow up for the Aegis. Really unfortunate apple for add-ons as yeah. it hit, I believe, another player and it spread back on him right after his Aegis faded away. Exactly, yeah. Add-ons was a little bit in a, just in a bad spot there. Not him necessarily, but dealing with that apple can be so tough. Because as a player, you generally want to run away from your teammates, but running away from your teammates sometimes means running towards the enemy. Yes. <laughs> got to be able to separate the damage sometimes. You got to also make the evaluation is, uh, well, I got to run towards my teammate if I want to live. Can they survive that detonate damage? And the answer for that question for add-ons was absolutely not. Inside the cloud was not to reset his cooldowns even further. Doing a good job with this Chronos Pendant Mage's Blessing at 30% cooldown reduction, technically 40%. He's really able to start bringing the pain. A beautiful unruly magic around this blue buff. And these little corridors favors the Discordia, being able to bounce those little tiny balls all over the place. 
some exciting games so far, and it looks like we're going to continue that. Add ons to the sky and into the ground. Gons goes up and down. And Adons takes the elevator. Black Dragons now with nine kills. Two Athletico's ten. About 2,000 gold separated. And a very exciting match for our first game here on this wonderful Thursday. Still without any defensive relics, Black Dragons capitalizing on that. When they called those timers after the blue buff slash tier two tower fight, they were able to really realize that this rock is a sitting duck. The only way he could have avoided that whole encounter is if he perfectly timed his ultimate to avoid the epic uppercut from mm. P-Bay. Yeah, I want to be looking for that CC immunity, but not this time around. So instead, we see it swing in the other direction. Atletico with a very slight lead here, and it's only when the Gold Fury comes up, I want to see Atletico hit it as soon as possible. They could, but honestly, less than 2,000 of a goal lead is not enough to warrant that kind of aggressive, bold maneuver. I think Atletico need to slow down a little bit after losing out add-ons. They need to ensure that all their relics are available all their ultimates, and maybe use some more of this Athena dash taunt pressure. Start sentry warding the key component uh, areas of the map and be able to catch someone out of position just like this. Cliz jumping away. No safety for the mid lane tower. Tier 1 already gone here. Tier 1 tower on the right hand side already gone for both solo leaders, so... No harm, no foul. Not really worried about that 21 minutes in. Only yep. 500 gold per team. What's more valuable is this gold fury, but this is a hard bait. You're allowing Osha to tank this with the solar blessing while Shank is looking for the engage. And he's going to grab Kliz, bring the doggo down to half HP. Anon's a little too far, but the gold fury goes down anyway. Black Dragon's now on the defensive. Anon's gets hit by the knockoff. Aegis is done. Anon's going aggressive all the way deep. He's going to be taken care of by Kliz. Osha falls to the wayside as well. Two for the gold at that moment. Tully, how you feeling? Definitely not worth because at 21 and a half minutes in, Black Dragons have the DPS to start looking for the Fire Giant. Texie without an ultimate. Shank has the Defender of Olympus. There's a little bit of steel potential that Atletico could ensure. The question remains is how frisky is Black Dragon's feeling? And the answer is very. Wow. Big boy fire giant in the crosshairs of Black Dragons. This could be a turning point of the game. Texie going to be zoned out by P-Bay. Two players, Mez. There's the beach from Zazzo and Atletico. They're going to take it away from Black Dragons. Wonderful play by the Uller man. God's going to take Shank. But now that one, I don't even got to ask you. That is worth it. Absolutely. Texie and Zayz receiving the Fire Giant. Add-ons just not able to respawn fast enough to get that buff himself. But more importantly than those two players receiving it is that Black Dragons no longer got it. And Atletico, they got the Gold Fury. They received the bounty from Fire Giant. They're yep. looking solid in this transition to the late game. Texie and Zayz also still have that Fire Giant buff available to them. And those are the players you want to have it. Sure, you might want it on Osha as well so that he can get his additional HP 5. But with his Stone of Gaia and a little bit of help from the Urchin, I think he's all right. It's all about Zazo and the jungler, though, man. Zay's here, able to just pick up the Fire Giant for his team, make the play. Using the beads on the Kumamez is always an interesting thought process because you're like, somebody's going to break me. Yes. Somebody's going to break me. Somebody, oh, they're not going to? Beads, hail of arrows, walk away with the swag walk, baby. Zay's making it happen, 1-0 and 5 for the Hunter from Down Under. Black Dragons didn't respect the steel potential. They all needed to disengage from the circle entirely, or at least leave it. Leave the Fire Giant at 20% health. You can't leave it that low and allow those three Atletico members to enter the zone without being punished. Kliz was very unhealthy, sitting at about 25% health. He had to disengage from the top left, but the rest of Black Dragons just seemed a little discombobulated. Pibe had a great route onto Texie, but then nobody else followed up. Texie just uses Jet stream offensively realizing what Black Dragons was doing. Pushing up the left side now, the correct lane. The reason players opt for this one, it is the furthest away from the Fire Giant, so it's harder to defend. 
nice knockup from Pipe, sends Anon to about 40% HP. Long range ultimate, not gonna find a home, but Nan will find a home in the grave. The pull! Liz answers back with a gigantic ultimate, and Gods is here as well. Rampage for the Ratatasker. Five kills without an answer, and Marcel's getting involved as well. Coming down from the sky, Texie's gonna cut him short, but the double un trip skis for Marcel's, keeping it going. Black Dragons, Deicide Atletico, they're gonna continue pushing forward, and the answer has been heard. Black Dragons are not deterred in this set. They don't care that their fire giant was stolen. The mentality to bounce back after losing two consecutive objectives to even try to hold on to your tier two tower you got to give Black Dragons a lot of respect because most teams will concede the Tier 2 tower, not wanting to even deal, but the gold is just too close to still even call at this point, Tom. And that's why Black Dragons didn't care. They utilized the engage from P-Bay. He used all his abilities, minus his dash, which he saved to get out defensively to allow Gaunt to play cleanup crew. Also, just a perfect example of that, that intangible that doesn't wind up on the scoreboard. We talk a lot about experience. I don't mean the kind you get from killing minions. I mean the kind you get from killing time at land, the time that you spend traveling, the time that you've been here. Black Dragons, we've seen them since basically launch tournament, right? The very least worlds, number one. These guys, Nan and Pibe, have been showing up for years. And the mental fortitude to say, they stole our fire giant, they double flooded us in the first in the first minute of the game. You know what? We can still give it to them. We don't care who you are. Sit down, young blood. Black Dragons answer back. 25 minutes in, they've been trailing the entire time. Now, leading by five kills and find themselves in a tie game. And honestly, they just knew who to focus originally, immediately penetrating the back line to get this raw out of the equation. The healing is just too obnoxious to deal with if you get the raw low enough and he has to heal himself, but well, now he's not healing the front line. Beautiful play by Marcel to avoid the pull from Texie. Blinks forward as a jungler. And that was a big part of what the Let It Go has been doing. Kliz met up in the middle lane. Here's Osha, Gobs in the sky, Marcel's as well. PB gonna send a member of Atletico to his death. Nan picks up kill number three. Nice Discordia Stripe. Gon's gonna pick up add-ons. It's a five on three. Make that a five on two. As Nan picks up the second part they of the more. double kill. And the tier one tower crumbles to rubble. I thought they were about to dive that tier two. Even <laughs> before going for the tier one, the shell was a little bit early from Black Dragons without any real continuous threat. But granting themselves 500 gold with a tier one demolished middle tower. Black Dragons could be potentially setting up a trap. This Discordia play from Non barely clipped add-ons with a stripe to allow Gons to seal that Raw's fate. Atletico started off this game so hot, even defended the Fire Giant, but Black Dragons are just a step above in terms of cleaning out or closing out the game, rather. Kliz playing zone here and a much better job from Black Dragons that time around. Zayz will not be able to make the big boy play here. Fire Giant and the Pyro guy go to Black Dragons. And you know, Tully, I'm an excitable guy. I don't know if anybody knows that. You're pretty excitable. <laughs> And I like players, I I historically like players that are that are loud and aggressive. I like players that stand up. Last week we had the console land. I'm a big inbound fanboy. He's always up there thumping on his chest and everything. But I also like the other side, and that's Nan. I like the two extremes. Nan, when he gets into it, this is the look. He starts looking up through his eyebrows, and he's just in the zone in that middle team fight where he's getting the double kill setting up with the strife other players are hooting and hollering which i do like but non is just sitting there stoic as a statue and he's just going we've got it out of all the players from black dragons non has to be the most focused with how much attention he's received from Texi, shank and osha with four deaths of this game he's tied with Kliz at being the most deaths of his team not to his own fault it's just the pressure that Atletico was able to apply and he's now turned it up to the 11th level Nan has been hitting the abilities and been able to escape defensively in the late portion of the game I mean he could just make the 10th level higher that's why I crank it to 11 it's got a this one goes to 11 sometimes you can even go 12 black dragons Looking to push it all the way, maybe to 15. But you know what Nan, remi Nan reminds me of? Classic Lobster. 
right? Surrounded by all these big personalities, and he's just the the mature, stoic guy that kind of reeling everybody in, staying as that, that rock in the middle lane, saying, look, they can focus me. I can die. But late game, I'm going to give it to them, and I'm just going to say thank you for asking. This is what Nan does. And with personalities like Cliz and Marcel's around him, Nan's just stoicism is so important to what this Black Dragons team wants to do, and they're going to push it on the left-hand side. Cliz cut down low. This could be a good defensive set, but Gon's going to cut the team fight in half. P-Bay and everybody else pushing backwards, and Atletico do get a nice defensive stop. They take a lot of Cliz's life bar. That's going to cause Black Dragons to double guess what they're doing here. Back off and regen. Still a minute and a half of this Fire Giant buff remains. Black Dragons able to just slow the pace a little bit. Kliz trying to heal off minions with that jump and get some of their souls. Trying to go for round two. They didn't really get any important defensive relics in terms of the Aegises or the Beads, but they got the team fighting ones out of Shank. The classic 4-1 push that we see a lot out of the North American and European teams here. The assassin by himself in the middle lane, pulling the enemy assassin away. And I think this is a much more important strategy right now with the Susano. The Susano into the Athena, we mentioned it from minute one. This is a big combo that Atletico are thinking for. And with Ratatasker bringing Susano away from the team fight, that leaves Atletico with less tools than they had earlier on. Going for round two, PB able to mess out Shank, but he gets taunted in return. Right Texie. side though, Gons eliminating Texi. Nine, one, and 10 for the jungle Ratatasker. Nod with a great ultimate and Kliz to follow up. It'll spread to Shanks. Osha's gonna spread to the grave. The Hunter on the run. That's gonna be trouble for Shank. Gons falls down. Looks like this could be it, Tolly. So many seconds in the box. Marcel's with the Dublayoon. That's gonna be the game. Black Dragons take game number one. With their second DSI, 31 minutes of play. The Brazilians, 25 to 12. Atletico need to go back to the playbook. And look, this is what I'm saying. Non, just like, all right, game two, what do we do? Hands behind his head. Thinking about it, ready, set, go. These Black Dragons guys, they've been, they've been through the ringer. Now, unfortunately, they have not had some of the success at the international stage, but this is what they're capable of. They're able to come back from a deficit. I think that's the biggest point I want to drive home, Tolly, is that Atletico ran this game they did. for the first half of it. They really, really did, but with how aggressive they were, they didn't have any sort of protections in the back line. They were using Shank perfectly in terms of finding setup and looking for the penetration. But who is there in the back line to protect add-ons? The answer was no one because that raw fell very quickly under that tier two tower. Yeah, fantastic stuff. Tom and Tolly on the call and Black Dragons on the win. Yes. Just love watching these guys come out here. Kliz fan favorite when he's able to take the victory. It's a lot of fun to watch. <clears throat> I don't know if he's the MVP though. Gonna ask you guys out there in chat who takes it. A lot of people here. Marcel's had a fantastic game, triple kill earlier on, and a double kill to secure the game winning Dia side. Gons, though, Gons. I think, Gons. really facilitated a lot. Gons was able to make the plays happen when Black Dragons really needed it to. He was the one to last hit and knock up add ons in that tier two tower siege and just using that global pressure when necessary. Even though that the blue buff was stripped away repeatedly, Gons was making the plays happen. And Marcel's did clean up the Dia side, but I'm still looking back at that play where he did it rotate to the soul lane on that second blue buff invade. Really important play from Gons because he did not have a strong day number one. Here in day number two, the bounce back. Let's bounce back over to the desk before we get into game number two. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, Ryan, honestly, we talked before that a bit of a blue buff we expected. That's exactly what we got there. Man. And junglers being a big focal point we expected, that was the case. Huge. I mean, this was absolutely the most exciting game of the entire yeah. land, and it really felt like Atletico had it, didn't they? I mean, this is the story of Oceana, though. I mean, they, they have these good performances, but they end up falling a little bit flat. And Texi did work this game. Six and five, the only one on his team with a positive record. He played really well. I think Shank had a great bounce back game, but where this team really fell apart in my mind was Adon's defensive positioning was bad. It just, mm. it just wasn't good enough. And in his offensive opportunities, Perfect. his long range snipes were really, really good. Yeah. But game two, before we even get into breaking down the rest of game one, he needs to be on a god with mobility in the mid lane because clearly he struggles whenever he doesn't have that option. His pathing, his relic usage, it was all subpar. And I think that's what allowed Gons to really prey on him. 
and Nan as well, those two had great games and they really focused on killing add-ons early in these fights. Gons will be the MVP of this set. And honestly, looking back, the star of this game, Atletico, got off to a great lead. Even in the replays, you can see while we're following Gons, who's getting his team back into it, that Atletico were up and in a good position. But then there's a bit of a team fight that went Black Dragon's way. Next minute, it's a Fire Giant. And yeah. then, well, Atletico get that Fire Giant, but don't do anything with it. That, that, was, that was a bad zoning job by Black Dragons for sure. But they, this is where being here year after year, playing against the best of the best year after year is so valuable. Because Black Dragons, let's say we put them in a time machine, but we take away all their competitive experience from mm. two years ago. They they're the same mechanically, make the same exact calls. I just think that they lose that wherewithal in the middle of that game. Once they lose FG, they're down to a region that's never won a game at an international level. I think that gets to them, but because they've been here so often, they've had these rough games, they've gotten smacked around by some SPL teams here and there, they've had competitive games against SPL teams here and there. That, I think, really grounded them and allowed them to stay focused and not tilt whenever that happened. I do feel the